Welcome back to Gale Force Wins Season 4. The Gale Force Winds podcast is proudly sponsored by the Newfoundland and Labrador Construction Association. The NLCA provides unparalleled opportunities for its members through industry education, construction information, government advocacy, and networking events. The NLCA is building Newfoundland and Labrador. For more information, visit nlca.ca. Well, we are really excited to be here in in, I guess, you'll describe where we are exactly, but Judith, just give us a little sense of where we are from your perspective, and then I guess you can ask Ever to introduce himself. We're here in Budapest at the Arany Bastia restaurant. Uh, we're on the Buda side, uh, in the Buda castle exactly. And this is a wonderful place. I've, I wanted to come here for so long, and I'm so happy to be here. And Gabor, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about this beautiful place. First of, first of all, thank you very much for coming. It's so nice that uh, uh, you managed to come here after such a long time that you wanted to come. Uh, I'm Gabor Kerestes, I'm the director of FMB of the Aranybastia restaurant. And uh, the reason why everything around us is unique is the history. So here, if you look around, every single part of the building has a piece of history, but the whole building is brand new. So this building was originally built to Lunyanyi Menhirt, and after Lunyanyi Menhirt sold to Hatvani Ferenc, Hatvani Ferenc had a huge art collection as well here, and it took five years to manage to organize everything in this building to store here. And Unfortunately, like most of the other buildings in uh, this side of uh, the city, on Buddha side especially, uh, got bombed during the Second World War, and this building got bombed as well. But before uh, has been destroyed, um, basically has been, uh, they, st they distill everything from here, the whole art collection as well. The art collection, you saw even a book about it, uh, what tell every single part, every single room individually what piece of art was on the wall, included furniture as well, for example. And here, around the end of 1990s, uh, someone had the idea to build something here. And it took such a long time to get done this building, but at the end of 2021, the building has been finished and opened as home of the Batyanyi Lajos Foundation and home of the Orange Bashir restaurant as well. Were you saying that it was, was it empty for a period of decades and, or, or did you, yeah, it was? Yeah, after the Second World War, like at 46, they demolished the leftover as well of the building. So it was and, like bombed to the ground? Yes. Is that what, is this part of the original building? Uh, this is part of the original Orange Bastion, the Golden Bastion. The Golden Bastion, what, what is the name of the restaurant as well, is, uh, is from the unfortunate two years when Turkish people were inside the castle district and we were outside of the castle district. They did build bastions around the castle district. And this is the leftover of that part. So it's way older than the original building. This one was under the ground when the original building was built here. So what year approximately would, would these stones be from? Well, what is behind me is uh, you can see three different layers yes. of, uh, of uh, the foundation of the original uh, Golden Bastion as well. And the bottom layer is from the 13th century. And we are going up to the 16th. So you're a restaurant manager, but we're putting you on the spot now as a archaeologist, I guess, are we? <laughs> it's not the first time you've been asked that question, I guess. Well, it never happened before. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did a good job as an archaeologist. <laughs> I was lucky enough to have lunch here today. Judith and uh, Eniko set us up. I had the beef. It was absolutely delicious. Tell us a little bit about the uh, inspiration for the restaurant and the dishes that you're serving. It's not just the, about the food. It's 
is something what we want to create. Uh, we want to create a space for people who are who just live around us or coming from abroad as well. A space where they can come just for a discussion. They can come for a glass of international wine or or champagne, uh, enjoy a cheese plate with it, and want to create something what is unique with the part of the history what was in the building, but unique with the view as well, and unique with every single small piece what we have in this building. For example, in the restaurant, just I'm I'm starting from a little bit far away from your question. That's fine. So. Uh, in the restaurant, if you if you look around, uh, you can see even the carpet on the floor. What is the original map from the part of the century when the original building was here is like a Google Maps on a carpet, <laughs> but from 100 years ago. Uh, so every single small details are about the history, about the traditions, what we have here, and the food want to create something similar. Most of the items, for example, we have the cheese plate on the menu, what is uh, made from cheese selection from Carpathian Basin. Uh, if you check the new menu, you could see a couple of traditional Hungarian dishes as well. But this place always asked to be a little bit international as well. So it's, it was a huge uh, question, how can we create something what is international, but we are, we are able to show us show what is the Hungarian cuisine and the beef chicks what you had for example is something similar as well is a little bit international but is a little bit Hungarian as well it has a hunger it had a Hungarian twist on it mm -hmm. it was delicious I've never ever tasted no. uh, a beef cheek that delicious before thank you very much I, I will I, I will tell the chef definitely <laughs> I agree the, I, and back to your answer to my question about the cuisine, the atmosphere, Judith, I felt it the moment we walked in. It was spectacular. You just feel welcome. You, all your staff make eye contact. We sat down. The, uh, the opening dish was a soup. Or soup? A beef. soup. Beef. Beef soup. I love the way it was served in a... Uh, I, what, what would you call, not a bowl, but it's a, a red pot. Yeah, a pot. It's a pot. It was served in a pot, and the yeah. staff took the top off, and it actually, and I'll have a picture of it up, but it had it was on a on a plank, a wooden plank, yeah. stamped, I guess, with the logo of the restaurant. Yes. Yeah. Just really, the way I felt being served there, here, was incredible. Well, how, how did you feel? Yeah, absolutely exquisite. The food, the service and not to mention the parliament building. So we were sitting uh, at a table where we could just see the parliament building and we were so fortunate to be here uh, having our dessert while they were turning the lights on the parliament building. So can you imagine that the sun is setting and the lights are on and you're having the delicious meal and just looking out of the window and see this beautiful panoramic view of the parliament building and the Danube. Yeah. It is truly a remarkable place in Budapest. Uh, you mentioned that it was very nice when you walked in and you, you felt welcomed here. It's something what is very important as well, that if you check, if you look the building from outside, you are, some of the people are, oh, maybe it's, it's too fancy for me, mm -hmm. it's, it's, I, I don't really want, I'm not dressed like that. Uh, it's not, it, this place doesn't want to be like that. This place, if you check the interior design as well, we put tonnet style chairs as well, just to make a little bit softer, uh, to be more, more cozy for everyone, say like that. So, so you started here at this restaurant, how long ago? Well, we opened one, one and a half years ago, so. So briefly, prior to that, what, what was your, your, your job? Where were you uh, five years ago? Well, two years ago, I was already here, well, more or less two years ago, uh, when the building has been finished. So I saw every single wall when it has wow. been painted, and sometimes even the wall was not there. Uh, but uh, I just moved back from abroad, so I spent 10 years in London, I worked in different high-end hotels and restaurants. How does it make you feel to be here in this incredible restaurant? 
well, as my plan was always to be in a restaurant like this. And I was so lucky because in London I saw beautiful restaurants, beautiful buildings, beautiful hotels. And I always had the dream that, okay, I really want to work in a place in Budapest, a similar place in Budapest. And I found it. What, what, are you, what would you say to summarize your experience uh, here today? That I would recommend to uh, everyone to come here. Doesn't matter if you're looking for a fancy restaurant or if you're just coming here for the view or having a nice meal or just a glass of wine. I think it's, it's worth a try for everyone. I agree. Can you pronounce the name of the restaurant for, for my Canadian friends watching this once again? It's Orani Bastia. Orani Bastia. Almost. Um, let me try again. Orani Bastia. Yes. Better? Getting there. Yeah. <laughs> Getting there. <laughs> well, all I can say is that Gale Force Winds is incredibly privileged to have been in your presence and be served by your staff today. This was truly one of the most incredible experiences that I've had in, in a culinary experience in my life. And uh, I appreciate what you do every day. Keep doing it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for tuning in to Gale Force Winds. That's Gale Force Winds, W-I-N-S dot com.